Hi everyone, my name is Judy, and today I will be talking about how I got the ASEAN scholarship to study in Singapore. Before I go into detail on the process of how to apply for this scholarship, I am going to define what the ASEAN scholarship is first. The ASEAN scholarship is hosted by the MOE, which is the Ministry of Education in Singapore, and it allows students from ASEAN countries and China to apply for it. The level of study entirely depends on the country that you're from. So you can either be applying for the secondary one, secondary three, or pre-university scholarship. Since I am Cambodian, only the secondary three scholarship was available to me. So that is the scholarship that I got. Secondary three is kind of equivalent to grade nine. So I will be going down two grade levels when I get to Singapore. This scholarship is valid for four years. So I'll be studying secondary three, four, pre-university one and pre-university two. Furthermore, it does depend on the scholars themselves as well because it is renewed every year based on their performances, which means if you do bad, they do have the right to revoke the scholarship. According to the website, there are several benefits of this scholarship. It will cover our annual allowance. I've been told that our allowance actually depends on our age as well. So the older you are, the more money you get. Hostel accommodation, which is where we will be living. Settling in allowance. Return economy airfare, which means they will be paying for a few of our flights when we decide to return to our home country. Our school fees and school examinations. They will also cover medical fees and insurance. Now, you may be thinking, wow, this scholarship sounds really interesting, but am I allowed to apply? Am I eligible? In my year, which is 2022, you are allowed to apply for this scholarship if you are born on 2nd January 2006 to 1st January 2009. So if you are planning to apply next year, I think it would be 2nd January 2007 to 1st January 2010. But I'm not completely sure yet, so just take that with a grain of salt. You have to be proficient in English. All of the tests and interview will be done in English, so you really have to impress them with your English speaking skills. You should also do well in past school examinations. Basically, you have to be a nerd, you have to get good scores. Furthermore, you have to have completed at least grade 10 of senior high school or upper secondary. I'm not really sure if this is super necessary because they did include like birth dates in 2009, which the person would probably be in like ninth or eighth grade. And my brother applied as well. He was in ninth grade when he applied and he got up until the interview portion, which is the final round. So as long as you feel like you have the abilities and skills to go for this scholarship, just apply. Have studied English as a subject in grade 10. I think if you're in an international school, you would probably have English as a subject. Have a good record of participation in co-curricular activities or CCAs. This can be that random math competition you joined a few years ago or being a part of your school's student council. The first process that I will be talking about is the application process. A lot of people sign up during this stage and do not go to the next stage. I believe 300 people applied for the scholarship, like for this part, but then only 25 people got to do the selection test, which is the stage afterwards. So in this process, you have to include your school records, which are your scores from the last two years. I was in the middle of 10th grade at the time, so I only had my first semester scores and I just put that they were okay with it. I had to include my co-curricular activities. Basically, I included activities such as MUN, Math Olympiads, my student council positions, and World Scholars Cup. You also have to include your relevant awards such as like getting on the honor roll, getting on the principal's list, stuff like that. It just shows the Ministry of Education that not only do you do well in school, you also do well outside of school. They also ask you to include financial aspects of your life such as your school fees whether or not you have a scholarship currently and your parents job and income you have to wait around like two months in order to get the result of this application process they will send you an email that's how I found out and you will need to do a confirmation on whether or not you are joining so let's move on to the selection test process when you get the email for the selection test 
make sure you read it carefully. Selection tests are the second part of our scholarship. In my year, I was tested on two subjects, math and English. Both of the tests were two hours long. Yep, two hours of sitting there trying my best not to break down into tears. It was hard. It was definitely hard. Let's talk about the math test first shall we my favorite subject in the world <laughs> actually almost failed the scholarship because of math like the interviewer straight up said to my face judy everything looks good okay we are concerned about your math score though i fought for my life i fought for my life at that moment i kept talking and talking i don't even remember what i said it all slipped out of my brain at this point but i remember her saying can you summarize everything you just said into one sentence and I did. I tried my best too. And then she cut me off in the middle of my sentence and told me to leave. Okay, moving on. When it comes to the level of the math test, it will be around like secondary two, secondary three level. So in order to prepare for them, just search up like secondary three math test papers and answers. Then just do them and compare them to the answer key in the sheets that you found. Honestly, the math test wasn't that hard. If I just had more time to like sit there and think of um, everything that I have learned in all of my years, I probably could have done more. I actually counted the number of questions I did and I did 20. 26 out of 32 questions and i'm pretty sure i got half of them wrong i guess i'm just too cool for school i need to stop making jokes i'm sorry i'm not funny someone need to tell me to my face stop this is enough no you are not allowed to use a calculator during the math test try your best to elaborate with your answers and show a lot of solutions because they will probably give you points for that even if you don't get the answer right at least you wrote something now on to the english test like i mentioned before the english test is also two hours long and it includes two parts the first part is comprehension and language usage which is basically vocabulary make sure you improve your grammar the second part is writing they'll give you a bunch of topics i think they gave me two topics and you have to choose one and write about like 300 words i think we all finished early for the english part of the test because everyone was just like sitting there having fun like my brother started drawing on his paper and then his draft paper of course and the teacher that was like monitoring us just stood near him and like watched him draw in order to prepare for the english test i think the only thing you can do is like search up the same thing as the math one except replace it with english of course and read a lot of books so that you're familiar with grammar rules or straight up read the grammar rules dude in my opinion the english test was much easier than the math one it's probably because um i write as a hobby if you want more details about that essay make sure you message me on instagram and I'll try to tell you like everything that I wrote. If you pass the selection test, you'll know in about a month and they will email you once again. The third process is the interview process. I honestly did not prepare much for the interview just for like some basic questions and I practiced talking to myself a lot. I actually took notes after I had the interview and compared them to my brother and the questions were pretty similar, but these are the questions that they asked me. The first question they asked me, I swear on this dog right here. How did you think you did on the math selection test? And I said, I don't think I did that well. I tried my best though, blah, 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 you know. Basically what I was trying to tell you guys earlier. Then they asked me a lot of follow-up questions on like that math thing because they were concerned about how I would do in regards to the math subject in Singapore, I guess. I had to keep reassuring them that I'm just gonna keep trying. And they kept like trying to scare me or trying to make me say that I'll stop trying to do well in math. They're like, what if you're just not good at it? That's impossible. I'm good at everything. Then they're like, what if you literally tried everything and you still are bad at math? How do you deal with disappointment? And I said, well, if I tried everything and I'm still not good at it, I'm not going to beat myself up and call myself stupid, you know? I told them that my self-worth is not based on grades and I'm gonna keep telling myself that my best is always enough, so I shouldn't be too hard on myself. And sometimes the best thing to do is to accept when you're not good at something and move on to something that you're actually good at because 
If you keep giving all of your energy towards something that strains so much energy out of you, it's just gonna make you really sad. This dog won't leave me alone. Or maybe I won't leave him alone. Right, Loki? Mm hmm Give me a kiss. My dog treats. Very cute. Moving on from all of that math stuff, they asked me how I heard about the scholarship, which I told them that I heard it from my friend because she got it the year prior. They also asked, why Singapore? Now on to the juicy questions. They asked me, what are your career goals? I said that I wanted to go into med school and specialize in women's health and psychology, but I also want to be a writer. And they're like, why? Those are like really different things. Next, they asked me, are you aware that you have to share a room in a hostel when you're in Singapore? And I said, yes, I am aware. I'm gonna have a roommate. Pretty cool, actually. They also asked me, are you a neat slash organized person? After that, they asked, what would you do if your roommate was not neat or unorganized? And I said, first I would talk to them and then if they still don't change it, I'm gonna secretly start cleaning their room bit by bit. And then they're like, what if you clean it in the morning and when you come back in the afternoon, it's trash? Then I said, well, I'm gonna like keep forcing them to. And I basically just kept interjecting, trying to like, I don't know, find a solution for it because if my roommate is unorganized, I might have to kill them. Kidding, of course. This is a joke. That was a joke. That was a joke. After they kept saying, what if, what if, what if, they got to me. That's when I knew I had to make my move. I had to be funny. I had to make them laugh. And guess what? I did make them laugh. I said that I would scream and cry if my roommate was still unorganized. And they were like, hee. I was so proud of myself. That was all the validation I needed. I don't even care if I didn't get the scholarship. I made them laugh and that's all that matters. I just bit my tongue in the place where I have a blister. I am in extreme pain right now. That was the last question. And then they asked, do you have any questions for us? As for my brother, they saw that we have the same last name and we did go like one after the other. Basically, they asked, do you know how hard or easy the selection interview is? They also asked, what if your sister got in and you didn't? A few questions that are different from mine and they asked him was, if the studies there are really hard, what will you do? They also asked him, what are your bad habits? And he told me that he just stood there like, silent he was thinking about it like he didn't know what to say and then they're like do you not have any bad habits and he's like eh, you're not funny i'm the funny one i'm the funny one in the family and that concludes our selection interview portion of this video anyways a few weeks later and i got the email saying congratulations i got the scholarship if you guys have any questions on any of the things that i talked about then don't be shy be sure to message me on instagram at judy.koi or you can just comment them down below and other people can see your questions as well if they like have the same question but they're too scared to text me privately about it or something if you are qualified then i hope that you can enter the scholarship next year make sure to actually ask me questions because i am happy to answer them thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you next time bye